Welcome everyone to Spatial Affairs. Uh, you are among the first ones uh, who can visit uh, this exhibition at the Ludwig Museum Budapest. Uh, it is a physical and uh, a digital exhibition at the same time and uh, we are going to introduce uh, together uh, with Julia Vini both of the exhibitions. But we, before we delve in uh, into the, uh, uh, the numerous artworks uh, that we are going to show uh, tonight, uh, I would like to uh, contextualize uh, the exhibition a little bit, uh, which is part of an international uh, collaboration project, a practice-based research project uh, entitled Beyond Matter, uh, which is led by the ZGM, the Center for Art and Media in Karlsruhe, and the Ludwig Museum is one of its partners, as well as the Aalto University, uh, with whom, uh, whose students uh, we worked together uh, on the realization of the exhibition, um, and also the APFL pavilions um, in Lausanne uh, is uh, among the associated partners uh, of the project, uh, who took part mainly uh, in the production of uh, spatial efforts, wording, Atir Vilagrasha, the digital exhibition of the show. Uh, I shall also emphasize that uh, uh, spatial affairs uh, includes, or uh, actually uh, uh, spatial affairs will be accompanied by a symposium, the Hybrid Museum Experience Symposium, which takes place next week on the 6th and the 7th of May. Um, entirely online, so uh, regardless of your geographical position, you can join. Uh, please register. The registration is free, uh, and you will find all the information of the microsite of the uh, symposium uh, from the Ludwig Museum's website. Uh, Beyond Matter is a large-scale cooperation project, a research project, as I, uh, as I mentioned before, um, and its main aim is to uh, elaborate on uh, the virtual condition, a condition uh, in which uh, we all uh, are, or this is our thesis, and uh, we thought that uh, uh, we, uh, we need to understand this, uh, especially its impact on uh, art production, art mediation, art curation, uh, and uh, art institutions in general. As a first step, um, we realized that we need to um, understand what space actually is to uh, be able to talk about the virtual condition. Uh, this is how we uh, conceived or this was the basis on which we conceived the exhibition uh, Spatial Affairs uh, together uh, with Giulia Vini uh, in the last years uh, and we are very thankful uh, for the Ludwig Museum and all the other involved stakeholders and parties uh, for their uh, incredible uh, support and collaboration. And now we can, uh, we can start to dwell, delve in uh, into the, um, uh, this uh, beautiful exhibition uh, which could be realized uh, despite the pandemic in the uh, physical space uh, of the Ludwig Museum. As first, we will have a look at uh, a very peculiar approach to virtual reality or a very peculiar approach to create uh, space, to create architecture. Um, and this is, uh, this is a piece of Hans Hollein uh, from the late 60s. Um, on, uh, on that board, uh, you can see different hills uh, which are standing for uh, different experiences like that. Uh, or uh, different uh, buildings that could be uh, built up uh, uh, cognitively, so in your mind, when you take those fields. Uh, especially this one is quite nice in which uh, the, uh, taking one pill will uh, cause a, a little chapel, two pills uh, uh, um, a church, and taking three pills will make you think that you are in a cathedral. Um, also, uh, uh, this is why Peter Weibel calls uh, Hans Hollein a universal uh, architect. And uh, 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 this also leads us to another approach of um, uh, uh, spatial experiences and another approach to virtual reality um, 
which uh, which was created by Jeffrey Shaw. Let's, let's say journeying uh, through, uh, let's say, temples in 21st uh, century, in 20th century art, this uh, initial also room aimed to uh, already uh, pose one of the two approaches, let's say, in the exhibition, naming having historical artists and more pioneering and written gest gestures. So in this case, we have the ritual sculpture, 1981 by Jeffrey Shaw. Uh, Jeffrey Shaw is a pioneer in virtual, uh, let's say, arts and virtual environments. And here we have a sort of uh, preliminary uh, example of augmented reality installation. Um, the main starting point was, let's say, the method of the pepper ghost, which comes from, let's say, the 16th century. And through this, uh, let's say, mirror, uh, the, the visitor can actually see uh, pretty simple digital shapes, um, let's say, um, appearing in the space. In this sense, we can consider this culture, as well as in, in general, uh, media artist Jeffrey Shaw work as a very pioneering example in the fields of reflection between virtual and physical space. We move on to the first exhibition hall where we uh, see a large scale installation uh, of Alicia Quade. Uh, this installation uh, rather focuses on the question uh, or rather the, uh, the clash of uh, natural and technological. Um, the artist uh, took uh, a stone, a simple cliff, a natural stone or cliff, uh, made a, a 3D scan of it. Um, then uh, milled a stone of the same material uh, in the shape of, um, uh, of that uh, original uh, natural so stone. Um, and uh, what we can see on the walls uh, are some of the altogether uh, 30,000 printed pages um, that uh, uh, include the source code uh, of the stone, um, the code uh, which describes uh, that natural stone, um, its uh, spatial qualities in the end. Um, so uh, in this installation, the artist uh, uh, created an object, created a sculpture uh, without uh, touching it uh, uh, with, uh, with her hands and uh, without uh, acting as a sculptor in a traditional sense. This sort of uh, spatial um, component also around uh, Alice Quade's uh, sculpture uh, links again to a sort of pioneering example in the early uh, work of uh, Lucio Fontana, who's uh, of course a renowned artist for really reframing our conception of uh, space. Um, in the exhibition, we feature bo both the uh, Manifesto Blanco, which was uh, co-signed in 1946 uh, by um, Lucio Fontana and basically expressed uh, the first ideas which then conducted to Spazialismo. Here, really, the artists and the group of authors of the Manifesto invited to, in, to let's investigate the fourth dimensional art and inviting also scientists to, let's say, um, a focus uh, on the research in this new conception of uh, space. The picture also, uh, which is featured in the show, uh, is the uh, environment, uh, la, la struttura, um, al neon per la, la nona triennale di Milano uh, and in this sense in 1940, uh, 50, um, 1951 was an important basically translation of uh, this idea of spazialismo in a sculptural, uh, in a sculptural uh, dimension. Neon was for Fontana the medium that could really allow, let's say, this uh, sculpture to basically um, address more uh, environmental uh, consideration of space, of surrounding space. And let's say through the work of uh, Lucio Fontana, we actually shift to the, to the next uh, room uh, of the exhibition in which uh, we have, let's say, a few uh, main axes and artists really um, individuating a bit the, the main uh, points uh, in the exhibition. With the work of Agnes Dennis, Tano Mazar, 
and Tid Domereles, we have positions that were extremely inspiring for, let's say, developing the concept. Uh, exactly. So uh, the work of Agnes Dinesh, uh, dialectic triangulation, uh, doesn't reflect on space uh, directly, uh, but it reflects on a method which was very inspiring to us, uh, since it uh, uh, it relates uh, to the Hegelian uh, di dialectic, um, as well as uh, uh, the system theories uh, of cybernetics, uh, which were very popular in the era when uh, uh, Agnes Dinesh. Uh, created uh, these, uh, these works. Um, and uh, Agnes Dinesh uh, calls us out with, the, uh, with this work, or at least this is what, uh, what she writes uh, in the catalogue of the software exhibition when, uh, where this piece was exhibited, to rethink, to uh, use this methodology to think uh, uh, processes and, uh, uh, and the usual uh, ways we approach things uh, through, and uh, this, is, this is something what, uh, what we might call in the second decade of the 21st century as the process of unlearning, uh, unlearning something what, uh, uh, what we think we already know. And uh, we think we already know space, but uh, it turns out throughout the research that we, we don't really know much about space, especially uh, we don't know much, uh, much about virtuality. Um, in, in the work of uh, Stano Massar and uh, Sildo Mireles, they are, uh, they are together because they are working uh, with environments, with the uh, uh, inner rooms. Um, in case of Stano Massar, we see uh, a space, a copy of, uh, of a, an excerpt uh, of uh, the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Um, Sildo Mireles uh, did not... Um, uh, reflect on a museum space, but created the sketches and later on models of, uh, uh, of corners, uh, corners with twists. Uh, and uh, these, uh, because these corners always included uh, certain uh, hidden angles in which a visitor could almost hide and uh, uh, jump out uh, from the materi materiality from his or her uh, materiality uh, to a certain uh, virtuality in an analog way. In the virtuality in these, let's say, virtual corners by uh, Tildo Mereles, we gradually uh, go towards the work of um, Andrea Sangelidakis, who sort of addresses as well uh, what we might consider, let's say, the virtual uh, dimension in sort of computer-generated architecture. Artists, as well as an architect, Angelidakis builds these soft, um, let's say, sculptures. The title is uh, Domestic uh, Ruins, and uh, let's say the, con the concept also of this, um, of this work, which heckles, let's say, an idea of of doors, of gathaways, uh, and um, let's say of um, uh, portals, uh, we have the possibility of interacting with the pieces and therefore, let's say, changing the pieces also in a sort of performative arena uh, for uh, the visitors. The original uh, idea, let's say, of these soft uh, sculptures, as well as of the context that they can generate, uh, comes from uh, Documenta, Documenta 14, uh, Parliament of Babis, and it was one of the main, um, let's say, uh, examples to actually gather through uh, the movement of these soft uh, elements, uh, let's say, a performative participation of the audience, which, of course, this whole scenario resonates with a particular echo today after um, the 2020 pandemic and, of course, how we, uh, the, the different, uh, let's say, use of space we are uh, currently forced uh, to. Digital also surf surfaces that sort of connect with other elements in the, in the room. Exactly, so the other element uh, uh, with which uh, we have a striking connection uh, is a work uh, or uh, rather uh, an important series of works uh, of the Hungarian sculptor uh, Jula Pauer, uh, who wrote uh, the Pseudo Manifesto, 
um, in uh, uh, in the 70s. We can uh, we can see it in English and the Hungarian in the exhibition space. They are both in the uh, Ludwig Museum's collection. And uh, in addition to that, uh, we see a documentary of Janos Kujas uh, of a pop-up exhibition um, that was uh, conceived and created by the artist in which uh, he uh, created an entire uh, pseudo environment. Um, as you can see, uh, he used this uh, peculiar technique with which he changed the surfaces uh, of the exhibition space. And uh, he also spread the manifesto uh, throughout uh, this event. The surfaces uh, are very similar to the ones that uh, Andrea Sangeridakis is using, uh, although uh, these are completely based um, on uh, analog techniques. We therefore enter the next uh, room, which features the work of Rosa Mengman, of which we are currently uh, watching an excerpt from, let's say, the, the desert. But the title of the work is White Out, so we are now basically in the moment of the, let's say, the second part of the video, the original, let's say, uh, part of this video, uh, 2020 by media uh, artist. Uh, Rosa Mengman actually narrates of a journey in a mountain and this sense of uh, this loss of perception in a, let's say again a mountain environment. Um, Rosa Mengman narrates about a dimensionless uh, space, dimensionsless space and the loss of orientation that she can actually navigate also through uh, only through let's say um, devices. And okay we are now <laughs> we are now at the end of the video which ends indeed with a, let's say, also a desertic, uh, desert uh, environment in which she, let's say, felt the, um, let's say, the, this loss of, uh, again, uh, as well, um, coordinates. But impo it's important, of course, in this video also, let's say, this white, uh, strong environment, which is basically the, the, the first experience that we can, um, let's say, go through exactly at the beginning of the video. And uh, it's also important to note that uh, Rosa Mankman uh, included um, impossible images uh, in this video. After she talked to um, scientists, partic uh, particle physicists, uh, about uh, impossible images uh, and uh, uh, the, the ends of uh, representation, sort of. Um, on the other hand, uh, the dimensionist manifesto or uh, the approach uh, to the visual arts and to any kind of art of uh, uh, Taro Tampo Shirato or Charles uh, Shirato, uh, uh, as he was known, um, is, uh, uh, well, uh, in his approach, uh, the representation um, uh, is a possibility. So uh, he doesn't talk about impossible images, but uh, uh, he talks about uh, the way uh, representation is changing uh, because of uh, the change uh, that is, uh, uh, or rather, uh, a huge shift that uh, was caused uh, by the development of uh, uh, physics, by the development of uh, science and technology in the early 20th century. And the manifesto was written in 36 and uh, it was signed by many famous artists, uh, one of uh, whom is also represented with the work in this uh, exhibition, Katarzyna Kopro. Um, and uh, uh, in this, he always adds uh, one dimension uh, to the already existing dimensions of every single art form. Uh, for example, he says that uh, uh, sculpture um, is uh, leaving its three-dimensional uh, space and uh, through kinetism it enters into the fourth uh, dimension and enters into the so-called Minkowski uh, space that uh, includes time uh, as its fourth dimension. Another manifesto is uh, part of this room written by the uh, Dutch collective Matterhaven. And um, they rather reflect uh, on surfaces, 
on uh, virtual surfaces uh, defined by computers and uh, uh, their uh, approach to them or their task, uh, how, to, uh, how to design them um, as designers. And uh, as designers, they, are, uh, they also uh, create videos. Um, and uh, for example, in the video, what uh, one can see in the exhibition space, entitled Information Skies, uh, they very interestingly illustrate the uh, virtual condition, um, the condition in which uh, information, um, but also uh, misinformation um, is a very uh, important factor uh, and it plays a very important role uh, in our lives. Um, after uh, this quite abstract work, we are entering uh, an exhibition space with a more concrete topic. Um, yeah, let's say that through the multi narration uh, of uh, Meta Haven, we also uh, start entering, um, we could say, the internet more as a political dimension. So that's uh, indeed the focus of the, this room uh, in a sequence, let's say, of, of works that again address the uh, political, geopolitical dimension and history of, um, uh, let's say, uh, the internet. We start uh, with the uh, work uh, of um, Alexander Domanovich, Grobari, a sculpture which uh, is uh, related from, realized in 2009 by uh, the artist, and it's related to the history of the Yugoslavian internet domain, which, uh, let's say, was deleted and disappeared in 2010. Of course, it's extremely interesting how, let's say, geopolitics, uh, let's say, it's uh, translated into uh, the history also of the internet. At the same time, Grobari is a, a literal reference to a nickname of uh, Yugoslavian um, hooligans that were, let's say, uh, acting uh, violently um, in, a, in the precisely in that time and that still, let's say, therefore, there's also a, a, a pretty strong critical uh, point in this sculpture by, uh, let's say, uh, Alexander Domanovich, which, which also highlights how basically behind the internet there is, of course, a geopolitical story. And uh, it's somehow also an historical approach uh, related precisely to the first, let's say, protocol realized at CERN in 1989, um, so always in Geneva. What we see here is the work by uh, Prophecies of the Nosphere, 2019 by Lohen And uh, we have the representation of the studio of um, Tim Berners-Lee. Uh, let's say the engineers who actually invented the net protocol WWW. And uh, of course, this, uh, yeah, this over, um, this, let's say, multiple layers, so this cosmos also relates to, uh, let's say, the conception of the no-sphere, uh, so the space of the reason, which was also one of the, uh, let's say, early conceptions at the basis of the internet. Yes, the internet, uh, which uh, was also called cyberspace, uh, especially in the 90s, when John Perry, Perry Barlow uh, wrote the Declaration of the Independence of Cyberspace. Uh, for him uh, and for many others uh, in uh, the late 80s uh, and the 90s, when uh, the internet became um, reachable, became ubiquitous, uh, as well as computation, um, many thought that uh, uh, the cyberspace will uh, flatten uh, differences, social uh, social differences uh, that are uh, present in uh, real societies. So many thought that uh, the internet uh, could be a social utopia. Um, actually, much has changed from that time. So um, in the last years, the younger generation uh, rather takes a critical approach and rather uh, focuses uh, the attention uh, on uh, the uh, infrastructure, uh, the actual materiality of, uh, uh, of the network, of the internet. Um, and uh, this piece is quite a, uh, quite a striking example for that. 
uh, on which uh, Jan Robert Tick uh, used uh, satellite images uh, of uh, rare earth uh, mines uh, in, uh, in China. And uh, uh, as, as we can see, uh, these mines are, uh, are completely barren. Um, nature uh, is uh, demolished here where, uh, where they are. And um, uh, they uh, uh, eat up more and more territories and take away more and more land uh, uh, from uh, the natural habitat of uh, uh, many uh, living beings. So this is an aspect we uh, also need to think about while uh, talking about uh, virtuality. While uh, we are moving forward and arrive to another uh, large-scale installation. We enter here the work of Caroline Bottini, uh, so the infinite end of uh, Kafka dash sloth. This is a, uh, let's say, multimedia, we could say, environment, uh, what uh, also the architect defined as a sort of performative matrix amongst the different elements of, the, uh, of this installation. So we have this central uh, more architectural model. We have a virtual um, animation uh, which uh, evokes uh, the shapes in the model and uh, different yeah, elements, including uh, uh, Oculus, uh, let's say, VR headset, in order to allow, basically, entering uh, the, this virtual world. Uh, originally, uh, the, this multi-layered uh, sort of narration had as a basis the work of uh, German artist uh, Kippenberger, who uh, produced uh, a very interesting installation titled The Happy Hand of uh, Franz Kafka's America, while um, Bonfili took um, Kafka's um, novel, The Schloss, so the castle, and imagined through, uh, let's say, a virtual, uh, again, environment, uh, actually potential ending for this uh, novel. And of course, here, the virtual uh, element uh, remains also uh, let's say the, the medium uh, through which uh, develop this multi-layer innovation. And here we have two prints uh, representing, we could say, some sort of scenographic props of this world uh, that uh, Carola Bonfili creates, uh, evoking also really this unconscious, we could say, dimension in which, let's say, real uh, thoughts as well as dream, uh, uh, dream-like, let's say, presences, the mix. Uh, creating really a, a sort of uh, overall immersive environment. We could say ruled in this case by the virtual dimension. And after our Kafkaesque uh, curve, we arrive to a space uh, which uh, we might call performative. Since uh, all the artworks present here uh, uh, are performative in one sense or the other. Um, Ángel Srivé, um, well-known uh, Spanish artist, who uh, actually changed uh, her gendered name uh, on purpose to a non-gendered name, Ángel, um, uh, created a um, or conceived a performance uh, which is documented here um, um, on, uh, uh, in the 70s. Um, and we see a photo of the, uh, the original performance um, in which uh, she invited the audience to enter a room. Um, the audience uh, entered the room with a, uh, with a ventilator. The ventilator uh, was off. And then all of a sudden, uh, she uh, switched the ventilator on um, and uh, people who didn't find uh, the uh, moving air uh, coming out of the ventilator uh, pleasant, they moved away um, from, uh, from the uh, central space, which, uh, which was then uh, defined by uh, the tape uh, on the ground. Um, and, uh, yeah, so uh, this, uh, uh, this is how uh, in this analog performance space was defined. Um, but the definition of space 
can, uh, can be realized in very different manners. And uh, as we can see in, uh, in this installation, which is uh, in its aesthetics, uh, very, very different uh, from the work of Anne CB or from maybe the uh, rest of the exhibition, was created by Andrzej Kufca, um, and uh, uh, it was a partial commission uh, for the exhibition. Um, and uh, uh, it, is, uh, uh, it is probably uh, the largest scale um, uh, realization, manifestation um, of the idea uh, or of uh, actually a, a certain clash uh, between uh, real uh, and virtual spaces, uh, between the computer generated uh, and uh, uh, palpable, uh, between the natural uh, and the technological. So uh, as we can see the, uh, on this abstract form, uh, it is uh, it is somewhat uh, natural, but also uh, uh, also somewhat uh, technological. So uh, it has this, uh, or it evokes a certain eerie perplexity, and uh, this eerie perplexity uh, is also um, accompanied by uh, uh, a text a recording of uh, Bob Nakonior about uh, uh, which is interpreting uh, the internet as a uh, as a eerie black forest. Let's say again here in the work of Skuska, we also have this presence of, let's say, pseudo-like or digital surfaces. So in some ways the work resonates uh, both with the dark aspect today of the internet, of course, but also so the black market, uh, the, art, the, the title references too, but also, uh, of course, this, uh, again, uh, digitally rendered surface and gradually let's say really shifting uh, in terms of uh, atmosphere uh, we enter here uh, what we consider as the conceptual core or the brain of the project in a white uh, let's say clean uh, space in which uh, multiple uh, artworks that sort of also we introduced before during the tour uh, actually uh, really address uh, sort of uh, important questions which relate also to how the whole spatial affairs project wants to sort of question uh, more uh, let's say uh, basic reflections on the exhibition space and the museum space with Exactly. So uh, this room is rather about uh, the museum space, the white space, and the, how we arrived to the uh, white uh, space concept uh, of the museum. Um, and uh, it's uh, embedded uh, in the concept of uh, uh, Katarzyna Kobro and Vladislav Streminski uh, in their manifesto, uh, in which they analyzed uh, uh, Western art history, or uh, at least uh, spatial approaches in Western art history, and also uh, spatial composition of uh, Katarzyna Kobro uh, illustrates uh, their approach and her approach um, to uh, space, uh, which uh, they call in the manifesto unism. Um, and uh, um, Beside that, um, there are, uh, so we are uh, jumping decades uh, with each artwork uh, since uh, this room uh, skews the linearity of time, but also uh, jumps through the, uh, the past uh, uh, 100 years, uh, starting with the 30s, going through the 50s with Wojciech Fangor's uh, composition, um, which, uh, which is based, or it's a detail of an exhibition uh, he created in the late 50s, um, in which uh, the uh, space between the artworks, uh, between the paintings, was more important than the paintings themselves. Um, besides, uh, um, and if we move forward, then we arrive uh, to uh, computer-generated spaces. Let's say the Gerd Ness uh, computer-generated drawings, uh, in some senses, are uh, here in this uh, space also again uh, a reference to uh, the transition to the computation and digital space for uh, let's say computer art so we have here also an early 
representation of uh, computer art drawings and in sort of mathematical, uh, let's say, uh, in a mathematical way, the aim was also to sort of control uh, disorder and chaos through, uh, let's say, the computer digital mean. But um, really as a sort of uh, symbolic also ending, let's say, of the physical uh, part of spatial affairs, we have uh, the, um, the VR uh, by uh, Adam Bloomberg in collaboration with uh, Guy Dendency and um, Brian O'Doherty uh, titled um, The White Cube. So in this virtual space, um, uh, we see, of course, a virtual uh, white uh, cube in which uh, the legendary words uh, by Brian O'Doherty on the white cube resonate, so and shadowed a white, clean, artificial um, other talks really about, uh, let's say, the uh, technology of aesthetics as it names uh, the white cube uh, itself. And uh, this is a very important, let's say, works sort of in the exhibition since it, it sort of shifts uh, to the main uh, meta level of the entire spatial affairs narration, which is also the idea of the dissolution of the, um, let's say, physical white cube, museological space in a multi-dimensionality that is, let's say, through uh, the artists in the exhibition as well as uh, through the different dimensions and platform of the projects, the main aim also of the exploration we uh, want to conduct through uh, spatial affairs. Exactly. So it's, uh, it's actually so great that these two uh, created this video together with uh, the narration of Brian O'Doherty uh, and created a virtual space out of the white cube, uh, which uh, signs the, uh, the end of the, uh, the white cube as, uh, as we interpret it. And uh, it gives us the freedom to move forward uh, and uh, to create uh, a space or to uh, create an entire word, an entire new word, and the process of this creation uh, might be called wording. And uh, this is why we uh, named the exhibition, um, the online part of the exhibition, Spatial Affairs Wording, uh, Ater Vilaglasha. So, um, this is where uh, we are going to enter the online space. And um, let, let me share, share the screen. screen. So uh, what we can see here, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we are looking at the right window. Um, we can see here the Spatial Affairs uh, Wording Exhibition. So wording was uh, really an idea, Spatial Affairs Wording. Uh, it's a virtual environment inhabited by crawling bodies of uh, artworks and of, uh, let's say, uh, body avatars of uh, artworks, uh, which was produced by um, the design, uh, critical design studio De Rodina, in collaboration also with, uh, uh, let's say, uh, sound, with the sound design uh, of artists by artist um, Enrico Boccioletti. Therefore, here, the idea was really through discussions with De Rodina, how to imagine, let's say, virtual, uh, dimension, uh, we can say, uh, for the exhibition, which was not the, the equivalent of just the translation of the digital, let's say, uh, space, uh, the real space into the digital dimension, but rather was a very independent, autonomous world. And a few ideas such as the uh, Deleuzean concept of a body without organs, as well as Conrad Zuse's theory, uh, sort of led us through uh, this conception of, uh, let's say, a virtual platform, which again lives as a sort of autonomous environment. And different avatars, in this case, uh, actually represent the sort of materialization of the works in the, uh, in the space. 
we would soon see two examples among the 12 featured artists and um, let's say net art based but also digitally generated uh, works um, and again uh, the idea uh, yeah for instance now we are entering uh, Jody's um, um, uh, untitled game Yeah, if we will enter it uh, soon, probably. <laughs> so uh, all of these works are born digital and uh, this one in particular uh, was uh, uh, created in the 90s, end of the 90s, actually in Budapest. Actually, it was uh, uh, created throughout the residency program at uh, C3. Um, and uh, uh, the artist uh, kindly emulated uh, this uh, control space, uh, as they called it. Um, it's, uh, it's actually a, a very abstract version uh, of a, a game uh, from the 90s. And uh, as you can see, now I'm interacting with it. I'm moving around with my arrows and uh, I'm moving through this, uh, this abstract uh, space in which uh, I can hardly play a game, but uh, I can explore uh, this uh, uh, very uh, interesting word. And then we are going back to to wording in which uh, further uh, further artworks can we see and uh, since they are crawling around we uh, we need to catch them visiting an exhibition uh, visiting this type of uh, exhibition which is uh, an own ecosystem is very different from <laughs> there's also the idea of um, let's say of generally uh, visitors will actually enter uh, not only the artworks but also basically the bodies of the visitors will mix uh, with the bodies of the artworks there's also a chat uh, component in the pl platform which uh, really aims to have this um, sort of uh, let's say digital encounter the platform will be also asked both in the beyond matter uh, let's say server and project but also at APFL pavilions in Lausanne and uh, so in Switzerland and uh, it's it's also an experiment uh, let's say to gather potential visitors from uh, geographically distant uh, let's say institutions in the same virtual space and we are now in a yeah in the environment uh, in the environment we, yes, exactly. We are in an environment, in an environment, uh, which is a work of Sasha Poflap together with Matthew Lutz and uh, Alessia Nigretti. Um, this work uh, is an online uh, environment itself, um, and uh, it, uh, uh, it is based uh, on a research by uh, Sasha Poflap uh, he conducted uh, in Moscow. Um, and uh, this work uh, was uh, created in collaboration uh, with the Garage Museum for the Garage online platform. Um, and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a digital ecosystem on its own, um, just like uh, our wording uh, experiment. So uh, in this sense, it is very, uh, very similar uh, to the exhibition space itself, uh, where it belongs. Um, and uh, uh, this can be also said to uh, many of the other works because uh, they are uh, they are um, uh, from the classical period of net art, just like the Jody piece uh, from the 90s uh, or uh, from the last uh, last year, so uh, rather recent productions. But they all reflect on um, generated spaces and uh, the spatiality of computation. This is uh, actually also a topic uh, which we touch upon uh, in the catalog of the exhibition. Let's say uh, wording is also really something that of course uh, digital visitors should, should experience themselves because it's a sound component in the environment of course experiencing the different works 
it's uh, supposed to become a lively platform that will stage uh, events, uh, let's say, over uh, summer, in which we want to gather also the, the many authors and voices uh, who took part in the special affairs project between, again, the digital uh, sphere, the physical uh, exhibition space, and this augmented uh, catalogue which will be uh, published also, uh, let's say, in conjunction um, with the show, which has also an AR component. Exactly. So uh, for such an exhibition, which is about uh, the augmentation of uh, space into the computational, um, we couldn't uh, leave out the possibility to uh, create an AR extension uh, to the catalogue. Uh, and uh, also, uh, we couldn't leave out the possibility to create a digital twin um, to the exhibition, which will be visible on the, uh, it will be accessible uh, on the Beyond Matter website uh, from next week. Um, uh, spatial Affairs Wording, Gater Vilaglasha, is already there. It's already on, uh, on the Beyond Matter platform, as well as uh, at, uh, on the website of FAFL Pavilions. Um, and uh, uh, otherwise, uh, we really hope that the Ludwig Museum is going to open um, in a couple of weeks, physically as well, that you have the possibility to come here and uh, visit the exhibition. If uh, you uh, won't be able to do so uh, by the end of the physical exhibition, which is the 27th of June, um, then you will have the possibility to uh, enter uh, uh, in a digital way, uh, both exhibitions and uh, the further uh, programs, uh, which are uh, also planned online and, uh, and in a hybrid way um, in relation to uh, uh, the exhibition and also in relation uh, to the entire Beyond Matter project. Yeah, with this again, uh, also renovating our invitation to explore um, in many ways uh, the multi-dimensionality of spatial affairs. Um, yeah, we, we look forward uh, to, let's say, uh, yeah, uh, visiting and having the exhibition open. In the meantime, to experience also a digital, uh, let's say, displaced audience in the virtual uh, dimension. And we thanks again uh, the incredible Ludwig team, but also the artists who contributed, the authors, I mean, the many, many uh, actors who contributed for the realization of Special Affairs Project. Exactly. So a big thank you for everyone, also for the visitors who uh, followed us tonight. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, we shall invite you to um, uh, uh, dismantle dichotomies of presence and absence and uh, with that uh, I think <laughs> I can say goodbye. Goodbye, thanks a lot.